Welcome all of you for our uh, next in our series of CVC at one webinars. My name is Bob Nash. I'll be hosting today and uh, Valerie Senior will be also running the chat and collecting your uh, questions and uh, managing, otherwise managing the webinar. Um, today we have online math, OER and ZTC. Our uh, valued uh, presenter is Gayathri Manikandan. She goes by three. So feel free to address her as such. Um, she's going to, uh, this is a second in her series on this particular topic, getting into more detail for you. So I can't wait to hear more. But before that, I would like to remind you that um, we end these web webinars with a survey and we'll present the link to you toward the end of the presentation. I do hope you'll fill that out. That really helps us uh, collect data, not only on this webinar, but uh, what you might see moving forward. Uh, we do have a pathway for getting uh, credit at your local college for attending these webinars. We, we will take attendance. And um, if you're interested in that, please contact us. I'll put my email address in the chat. And now, three, take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Bob, for introducing me. Um, um, so right this webinar, we are just going to recap. It's kind of last webinar, we talked about OER, um, how what are the materials available for us and um, how we can use it in our class so that students don't need to buy a heavy kind of expensive textbook. Um, so today we are just going to take one class as an example and we are going to use OER and, um, and my open math uh, My Open Math is an online homework management system. We are going to take these and put it in the canvas and make the class as a ZTC section. So this is our goal today. Before I go there, I will go over all these kind of uh, abbreviation, all these kind of acronyms, OER, ZTC, what are those stuff? And then I'll take you in. Um, meantime, if you have any questions, please uh, put it in the chat. I'll be happy to. Uh, address as uh, we move along. So first one is OER. OER is Open Education Resources. Um, so these are materials that's legally available and it's free because they have open licensing. Um, we, there are different type of licensing, like you can just copy as is, or you can copy and modify it, or you can copy and um, even you can use it for commercial purposes. There are different types of licensing, um, but in this webinar, we will just do hands-on how to take it and use it in our course. So um, the instructor and students can use it um, for free. Uh, it's not just a textbook. There are other stuff like a homework management system, um, like syllabus, like app, apps where they can see the things that work. So like... Uh, there are so many resources available. So we are going to take one as example and try to uh, convert our class to a ZTC. So what is ZTC section? ZTC means zero textbook cost. Um, so mostly we use, the colleges use this symbol to put it in the catalog next to the course um, to let the students know that this course um, the inst for this course, the instructor use the OER material, or this course doesn't require you to buy any um, course material like textbook. It's not like a stationary paper, pencil, those doesn't come. Everybody needs to buy that. But course material like textbook, the homework, online homework code, those are expensive stuff the student need to buy for the class to do the homework and stuff. So those kind of materials are available to students at free of charge. So they don't need to pay for it. So it's like mandatory that the colleges need to uh, put this symbol next to their course catalog. The students are aware that these courses doesn't require the students to buy textbook or other online uh, homework stuff for this. So moving on, um, there is another uh, category to it that's called low cost uh, section. Uh, we kind of shortly represent LTC, and this is the logo that goes with it in the course catalog. Um, but this is kind of a little bit different than zero. 
general, um, the low cost means any course material or homework system that costs less than $30. But that's not like set for all the college districts. Every local college district can uh, come up with this price, can come up with the amount, uh, how much they want. For example, some colleges have $45 as the uh, denomination for their, or the definition for their low cost um, logo categorization. Um, but different colleges use different amount. So I just want to share with you guys in this uh, moment because this amount vary. Um, so moving on to the next one, um, I have some ZTC FAQs. The ZTC section can't force students to buy homework codes. It's not just textbook. It, it, it comes with any associated fees in order for students to complete the course successfully. Um, again, the only exception would be the stationary supplies, pen, pencil. That doesn't come under this. They need to buy that. They have to buy that. Um, ZTC section may or may not use OER materials. So what this mean is some instructor uh, decide to use OER, which is open educational resources, free textbook, those kind of stuff. They can use it in the class, but it's not mandatory that the, the instructor need to use OER to make their course a ZTC section. For example, um, the instructor can provide their own class material. They, they can provide their own class notes or articles or freely available journals. It doesn't need to be a one whole textbook, but the instructor can provide all those uh, freely available stuff to the students and still make the class as ZTC section, all right? So the low cost materials cannot be labeled as ZTC. Sometimes um, it's only 10, like sometimes this kind of situation happens. There is kind of a lab, some courses has a lab and the lab has a manual that they need to purchase. Let's say they purchase from the bookstore for $10. Sometimes they, that they have to purchase, that's only $10. So the teacher think, oh, uh, I'm not using any textbook. It's just like a stationary, um, they just buy it from bookstore kind of. Anything that mandates, we got to put it in there um, so that there's a cost associated with it that cannot be listed as a ZTC. It needs to be listed as a LTC, uh, low, cost, low cost text. So coming to math in particular, so I'm going to take these as an example. Uh, in math courses, uh, most of the popular publisher um, online homework uh, software thing we use, my math lab, or my math lab, or my stat lab, and then uh, WebAssign, and then Alex. These are three popular ones we use. This is publisher uh, uh, made stuff, and it's expensive, right? So a lot of times what uh, when an instructor uses these, students have 14 days free trial period, so they are happy. They get started with the class, um, so um, they get that free 14 days trial period and they will be doing, and after the 14 days, they don't pay, all the work is gone, right? So they have to, they have to pay that money. So um, as a, as an option, as a substitute to these, we have these two, um, XYZ homework, Lumen. Um, these are some of the low cost uh, online homework uh, platforms we can use. And then we have my open math and adapt. This adapt is free in California. Um, so we are going to do one of those my open math, and then we are going to see hands on uh, how it works and how we need to do in our how we can integrate this in our Canvas course. All right. So now um, I want to give you a little bit idea. This my open math is an open uh, open licensed program. Um, so they are they are classified themselves as they can even anybody can use their work and then commercially uh, advertise it. It's totally okay. I think you can see here this X Y Z homework. If you have already seen X Y Z homework, the My Open Math will look exactly same as that. Um, but this one is free, and um, this Adapt is a one that comes with a Libra text. Um, so we can. Um, when we when time permits, if we have time, I will go there and show it to you. But just for the time's sake, we will do like one 
uh, one, one of those that's my open map, and these are totally free to use. All right. So any questions you have, any, um, have you guys heard about these before or you have any experience with it? So this way I can make the web webinar according to your needs. Um, anybody wants to jump in and tell your experience about using either a publisher material or any other softwares that I have put in here? Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself to speak aloud or you can uh, type your comment or question in chat if you have any. I guess there are no early questions. Okay, okay. so let's go ahead and continue. Um, so here we go. So my open app, that's the one example we use today. So this is an online course management and assessment system for mathematics and other quantitative field. So there are physics, or like anything that we need to work with a problem, like a math calculation, we can use this my open app um, software to do your homework, home, to manage your homework, right? So it can be used with any open textbook, and this is free for students and uh, teachers, and it integrates with Canvas seamlessly. So for example, once you integrate it, everything in my open map will show up in Canvas. So the students doesn't need to go any other place other than Canvas. The students will stay at one place, that is Canvas, and do everything. And as an instructor, all the grades from the homework from my open map automatically get transferred to the Canvas gradebook. So basically there is no copy pasting or all, all those stuff. It automatically transfer all the grades from my open math to Canvas. Um, so the students can see how much they got, what is their class average, if the Canvas gradebook is set up. So um, that's like really, really easy. And um, then the students do this homework, um, they get like um, all the features that are available in the publisher's online homework, those features are available in here as well. So for example, these are some of the features that are available in my open map. But uh, before I go there, um, probably you might have used um, um, publisher websites, what kind of features you like from publisher websites so that we can see if we can have those in my open map. For example, um, you know, the whole world get unlimited attempts. The students can try unlimited attempts, right? And you can decide as a teacher whether you want to give penalty for them doing late or no penalty. You can adjust those, all right? And then, um, homework and quizzes. For example, homework, um, the students can do one problem at a time. And for the quiz, you can make them take the whole test or the whole quiz together in one sitting. And then you can provide different attempts. Like you can let them retake it. Um, you can um, allow them like, um, like warning. Oh, you have five minutes to finish the quiz. So like those. Also, one more thing is, um, it's not completely online that they are doing multiple choice question or fill in the blank question. What we can do is, especially for math, we want the students to write all the steps so we can make them write all the steps, take a picture and upload it uh, for each homework. So this is like making them show the work so that we can do this here using my open map. And then we have multiple question banks. You can, you, you have, we have a pool of questions already created. So you can use those template courses or you can, by yourself, you can make like a pool of questions. So each, each student get one random question from the pool. So not everybody gets the same question. And it's so randomized that even you make them take the same question, the numbers inside the equation will be randomly generated. So each student will get a different question. This kind of helps students not to like, or, um, you know, copy the answers, those kind of stuff. And then we can provide this. What this means is every homework has a deadline as a due date. 
And then, um, like usually I tell my students, I know life happens, something happened that you cannot do the homework, no worries, I provide you like 20 late passes. Um, and then we can adjust this, how many late pass you want to give, you can adjust that. And also you can adjust one late pass can extend how many days. For example, I tell them one late pass will extend the homework or the quiz by three days, that's 72 hours. I just make it for my students. Similarly, you can customize it. The reason how this helps is because as an instructor, when students say, a lot of students, um, you know, go through a lot of stuff, but some are like really bold, or I should say they open, they ask the instructor, oh, if something happened, I didn't do the homework, can you please extend this? Many times faculty instructors extend, accommodate those students, but sometimes what happens is the student who decided not to ask the teachers, they kind of suffer because they did not ask, they did not tell something come, came up and they couldn't do the homework. So they are quiet and as an instructor, probably we may not know. Um, sometimes you may think, oh, the student is not doing the work, I don't know. Um, so those kind of stuff. So I, in the beginning of the class, I tell the students, look, I'm giving you late passes and um, they don't need to ask me. Uh, they don't even need to say me like, oh, something came up. I can't share something private. I don't, they don't need to say anything like that. They just click use late pass and then the homework automatically extends. So this is the cool part. As an instructor, do I need to track how many late pass they have, how many used, etc.? No, the, the my open math will track everything by itself. So you don't need to do anything, how many times they used. Um, so... And every time the student use a late pass, it will tell you, you have 19 late pass left. Do you want to use this? And also there is a lot of cool features, like let's say the student extended the uh, homework for three days, but still the student couldn't do. They can use another late pass on the same assignment to extend it three more days or whatever days we set. So these are a lot of features. It's more like I would say equitable to help the students um, to do their work. Um, so here that is. And also we can make sure um, we, we request students to show their work. So they write it on a paper, take a picture and upload it. They can do that. Um, another thing, if they don't want to take a picture, they can even type it right there. So th those are different ways they can show the work. Another one is, um, let's say the exam is coming up. Uh, they already finished the homework and stuff, but they still want to practice. So we have an option to keep the assignments open for a practice mode. So they don't have to worry about losing the grade that they got. The grades are all registered in the practice mode. Whatever they practice, that won't go to the grade book. It's just purely for practicing. So these are like a cool formative uh, assessments that we can use to help the students learn the material and master the uh, concepts, um, right? And then we can set like assignment prerequisites. For example, the students cannot jump the exam before doing the homework. So we can adjust those stuff um, in the My Open Math so that the students go in the sequence or they have to finish this and this before opening the exam. So we can adjust all those stuff. And also for each question, let's say they are trying a question, they have unlimited attempts and we can allow a video or we can uh, post a solved problem with all the steps as a hint. Um, so that way, when a student gets stuck in a problem, they can play the video or use any resources that you provided to them for using uh, for learning how to solve the problem. So these are some of the features that are available in my open map. So um, do you think of any other features that you think uh, the publisher website has it that you would like to see? Any other thing that you can think of? Anybody can begin, put it in the chat as well if you don't want to unmute. Does it have practice quizzes? Sorry, I was going to. Yes, yes, yes thank sorry. you for asking. Said. Yes, uh, he does have practice quizzes because as an instructor, you have total control. Uh, basically, if it is a practice, you just don't include it in the uh, grade book. Um, so now the next option is um, 
even the things that you have it in the grade book, you can open it for practice. So you can create a separate practice um, assignments. Like for example, I create a practice a midterm exam. So that one will not go to the grade book that just for a practice. The reason is because students get super nervous an exam just to kind of ease them. I create a practice exam and then make it due like two days before the exam. So they have already taken a practice. I make the practice exam prerequisite before the real exam. So they have to take it. It doesn't count for their grade. And that kind of gives a sense of feeling that how the exam is going to look like because I, I will make it timed. So you can make it timed. Um, you can even give like some uh, warning, an extra five minutes to wrap up or extra 10 minutes to upload their work. You can adjust it any way you want. So this way they get comfortable um, like before taking the exam. So yes, that's a big Thank question. You. Thank Welcome. you. Yeah. Um, any three, I have a question. Um, some of the publisher resources that uh, imitate this functionality promise adaptability and, and it implies that that the software is smart enough to know where the student's proximal zone is, the the edge of what they know and what they don't know, and they can adapt the courseware to present problems to push them, you know, just at the right pace. I'm not sure that's actually happening with the publisher materials, but does my open math have any similar features or functions? That's a very good, great question, Bob. Yes, um, not all the publishers one are making that. This is the adaptable one is like, um, I have seen Alex has it, the adaptable thing. Um, I'm not sure on the others one. Alex is a publisher, homework management system. It adapts to the student. But for my open math, um, I have not tried using it. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to think um, if that maybe that is a way that I don't know because all these softwares are like evolving and we do have a different versions of it is just keep getting better and better. As you could see, all these options listed, they're all like, you know, um, like just try to help the students, but it's a great one, but I can check on it if we somehow we can make it adaptable. But right now, as far as I know, in my open math, I don't think we can adapt automatically. We cannot make it. But as an instructor, um, I can do something like this. For example, I put a video there, right? And then um, the students need to watch the video. In the middle of the video, I ask a question. Like, for example, um, whatever I taught, like five minutes, Based on that, I ask a question and the student need to solve that question before continuing to the video. We can make things like that for using my open math, um, but the total adaptability based on what's, because if the student make a mistake, I would say, oh, you make this, we can, we can provide a customized feedback based on the answer. So we can say, oh, this part is wrong. So try again, or go back and watch the video from the beginning, something like that, we can do that but totally automized adapt uh, adaptability according to students' knowledge, I don't think we can do it on this. So um, to some extent, we can we can make uh, the course um, and handhold the students scaffold it so that they can follow with the flow of what we are doing. So, but the total adaptability, no. <laughs> uh, that's what I think, but I can double check and confirm. Um, so, thank you. Uh, there is a question from Stephen. Will you be showing how to bring in homework questions for assignments? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, Stephen, in, I'm just going to take you in a minute and then we will work on it. Um, so, um, next one the grade features. I, I slightly touched on this, and the grades integrate totally into Canvas. You don't need to worry about anything on the grades in my open map. Everything will come to Canvas and you can adjust it. Um, and there is an option to not count specific assignments towards the total grade. And then assignment categories allowed for weighted average. So still whatever features that are available in Canvas gradebook, uh, you know, in gradebook, we can have a homework category, exam category, quiz category, all those stuff still applies. Even you use uh, my open map. 
and you can move around. You can say still there are features like drop the lowest three exam score or sorry, homework score, something like that. You can still do that. So all those features apply, whatever we see in the canvas that still applies for uh, my open math when you integrate that. So moving on, this is the implementation time. This is where we are going to implement it. Um, so there are two things you need to know. So you need to have, number one is a Canvas Sandbox because we have to put this MyOpenMath in Canvas Sandbox so that you can see how it looks in Canvas and how um, the students will see. So first thing, we need Canvas Sandbox. Second thing, we need MyOpenMath account and a course to copy. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. So um, first one, I'm just going to go to one of my um, sandbox. I will show it to you guys right now. Um, here we go. So this is my um, sandbox right here. So there we go. Um, I have something uh, right here, but this is just a sandbox, so we don't need to worry about it. Uh, so this is our sandbox. And then we can just import the class into the sandbox. So for that, I need uh, my open map. So I'm going to go to my open map. So this is my my open map, and I have a lot of different classes, so you don't need to worry about it. And the link for my open map is, uh, I think, um, um, Bob, can you post it again? The my open map link. I will post it again. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So when we, I will show you in a different uh, browser, myopenmath.com. So this is the this is the um, web page. So if you have an account, you can put your username and password to log in. If you don't have an account, so you can request an instructor account by clicking here. Um, thank you, Bob. You can request an instructor account by clicking here so that it will take a couple of days uh, to get an account. So um, if you don't have an account right now, what you can do is you can still go there and you can you can fill the process and uh, it asks you week school and um, those kind of stuff so that you can get access. So once you have a login, you can put it, but what if you don't have a login now? Here is a way. So when you go there, if you click for instructors, there is like a little quick three minute video to explain what this is. And then these are the listed courses. These are pre-made courses that are available for us, um, everybody to use. So the, here is a tool for this course. So there are many courses available, but preview these courses Written to login page, login with username guest, no password needed. So we are going to use guest and then login. So welcome page, and I'm going to put guest, um, and then I'm going to log in. I'm just showing this because if you don't have an account yet, I still want you to be able to see what are the things available. So we can see this as a guest account. But the thing is, you cannot copy or download it in your Canvas course. In order to link it in the Canvas course, we have to have an account with My Open Math. Um, that's when we can download and copy all kind of stuff. But I am just right now a guest. So I can see what are the pre-made courses that are available. So here, if um, so right now, since I am a guest, I can only end the course. But that's okay. You can see the list of course. Well, if I, let's see, here we go. There are self study courses here, so I can click on a self study course. One of those course. Let's click college algebra self study, and it says, "Oh, warning! You are signing up for the self study course. Oh, the guests cannot enroll." So you can view the course, but you cannot enroll. But once you log in, right now I am logged in in my username and password so i can copy an existing course or you can create a course from scratch but especially when i'm new when i started it's a lot easier even now i copy a course and modify 
um, it's kind of hard for me to create a course from the scratch. So this is how I copy a course. Once you log in with your name on my open map, you click add new courses. So now it's asking you, do you want a blank course, copy it, template or promoted course or copy from a colleague course? So I usually don't use the blank course um, because it's like a lot of things that I need to put in on my own. So I don't do it. Um, these are the two popular one that I use. Number one is the colleague course. That means that it will show all my colleagues in my college. So that means if we are co-collaborating and creating a course, all our faculty courses will be listed here. Um, so I can choose from my group course and copy. But right now I'm not going to go there. Um, and again, every course has an ID. And if we provide that ID to somebody else they can, and allow permission, then they can copy. You can stop them from copying. So we can do all those stuff, but usually I go to promoted course. So when you click promoted course, there is a lot of courses listed here, and then I can sort it from my textbook. So here I go here, let's say I want to teach a calculus course. Um, so I'm just looking, this is a college algebra, this is calculus. And then these are all open educational material resource book. Um, let's say I want to choose this textbook. Let's say you can choose any textbook. I'm just choosing one. Uh, this is an open tax textbook. So I choose this as soon as you click one of the book, you can see all the pre-made course that have done, somebody have created and made it, make it available for others to copy. So these courses right here, let's say we have a Calc 1 course, we have a Calculus 2 course, and we have uh, another Calculus course. Um, we have an OpenStax Calc 2 course, and you can see who created this and they have provided you some description. Uh, Jeff created this course from Brooklyn College, and he says this college has a formative, this, this, uh, this course has a formative assessment, summative assessment, videos for video lesson, textbook links, worksheets, and activities. So this is the course, but let's say that's not enough. I want to see exactly what's in the course. You can preview this course and he have organ he has organized it into like 10 little modules. So every time you click, he has a lecture, assignment, um, again, a lecture, assignment, and a quiz. So, and there is a textbook, there is a lecture. These are all provided by um, the creator of this assignment. So you can see the pattern right here. So right now, okay, now I'm going back. I want to see somebody else course. Here I have another City College Chicago. Um, Helen has another course. I want to look at that course. That course looks something like this. There is an introduction video. There is a video lesson. There is a textbook. There are extra resources. There is homework. There is quiz. So all these courses has different stuff. So I'm just going to click one of the uh, homework so that you can see. Um, I'm just going to see a teacher preview. So that way I can see these are all the problem given in the question. Um, these are the questions and you can see some of them has a video to it. Some of them have showed detailed solution. So they have step-by-step -step solution as a guidance for the students. And this question right here doesn't have any guide. This has a video, this has no video. So these videos, some questions already have them. And for the questions that don't have it, we can add it by our, our own self. We can find a video and we can add it uh, on our own. So I do want to share a best resource for video um, that's called um, Math is Power for You. Uh, I'll put this one also, Math is Power for You. These videos are totally free to use uh, and these are captioned. So for the accessibility, this is very, very important that we have a videos that are captioned. The reason that I put this thing is you can see we have a lot of videos created. So for Calc 1, um, we have all these playlists. All these single video, every single video is captioned clearly for 
our students. So this is accessible. And most of the my open math courses use these videos for the lecture videos. So now we have an option, we can keep it as is, or if we want to humanize the course, if the instructor has their own video, we can replace these videos by our own videos. So um, this is the video links that I put in there for everybody. So now with that, let's decide what course we want to copy. So I want to copy, oh, I don't want to share with you guys. This, it has a California ZTC project. So these are created. Um, ZTC project grant. So that goes, this is a multivariable calculus. This is calculus one and calculus two. So any project, you can see this kind of uh, name there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this course. I didn't preview it, but I'm just copying it. Um, so now let's name it. Um, let's say this is a spring 2024. Calculus demo, something like that. Whatever the course name, you can um, you can name it. And I usually don't give any enrollment key for the students because I don't want students to go to my open mat outside. I want students to stay in the canvas and don't go anywhere outside. So I don't give the enrollment key to the students, or I don't put anything. If you want, you can put it, but I don't usually put it. So um, everything I just leave it as is. Um, here, um, you can add the start date, end date of the course. And this is the important thing. Um, I have allowed student to self-enroll. Um, and then we, I don't even need to provide a key because I, in here, I just tell, I want my LMS to control this completely. So allow the LMS to set assignment due dates. I don't even touch anything. I just go here. I say allow LMS to handle it. So everything can be done. I need to do it. Uh, anything in my open integrate it. So I say allow LMS. That's our canvas to handle this. All right. And then additional option. I say oh let's give twenty late passes. Um, each late pass will extend for seventy two hours, etc. So now I don't change mu nothing much. I just submit. So these are the stuff I put it. But later on, you can change all these stuff. It's not like you put it once, it's done. You can change everything. So these are the important stuff you need to um, note it down. But you can take it from different place. I'll show you. So this is my key. This is my secret for this course. Uh, this is the two things that you need put it in your canvas. That's how it's going to link. So now I'm going to enter the course. Let's take a look how the course looks. This is a course in my open map. I have not gone into canvas yet. But in my open map, I have this course. So this is the one that I copied and they have each section. They have a learning objective, read textbook, videos, exercise. So for each section, they have this. So I'm good with it. So now I notice that, oh, there is no quizzes. I see homework. There is no quiz. So what I can do right now is, since I notice right now, what I can do is I can create a dummy assignment right now. And then later on, I can add questions to that. So let me show you. Um, so here, here is an exercise. So I'm going to click this. And I am going to copy. The reason why I'm copying it is because I need a quiz, but I, they don't have a quiz. I need an exam. They don't have an exam. So I just copy a few bunch of assignments like this. Okay. I can create some dummy assignments like this. Um, the reason why I'm doing it is it's a lot easier to change the name and add questions to it rather than create a new assignment after the integration. So you need to see this difference. You can do anything you want right now here and then integrate. Everything will be nicely integrated. But once you integrate it, you come to my open math and add something, you need to manually integrate it. That's not hard, but you need to manually do it for students to see. So just to be precautious way, I just always create some dummy assignments here and then I integrate. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it, but I have some 
uh, placeholders for any future assignments I want. I put some dummy stuff. And you can see it says copy, 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 like that. So you know which one is real, which one is a copy, so you can change the name. So um, again, if you forget, it's not a big deal. Later on, you can create one in my open map and then integrate it in Canvas later. That's totally fine. So right now, my course is created. And you have all the options to manage your course. And you need to change everything. Uh, let's say you need to update some instruction. You don't have to do it for each assignment. Rather, there is a mass change. So whatever you need to change, you can do it for the whole thing. For example, I want to change something. So I clicked all these assignments. For whatever assignments, you can click. For all these assignments that I have, I want to change something. What do I want to change? I want to change, uh, again, if you want a prerequisite, we cannot do it for all, but one by one, we can put the prerequisite. But what I can do is I can do this. Um, let's do this. Display style, if you want to display one question at a time, you can make them see only one at a time. Or if you, if you want everything, you can make that way. Since I'm doing mass assignments, I want all the problems, default, default problem points for each problem is one point. I can put it. Submission type, do you want a quiz style or a homework style? So I can say this is a homework style. And then it's asking, can you make sure you update this? How many version do you allow for each question? I put 99. Do they have a penalty? You can add here 5% penalty per version. That means they try the second time, they get 5% off. Third time, another 5%. We don't want any penalty. Number of tries on each question, each version. So here is the deal. Let's say they try a problem, one question, and made a mistake. And they realize, oh, I forgot to type a negative. So now they don't need to do the whole problem. If you allow each question, I give them two attempts. Do they give a penalty? They don't want to give a penalty. Um, so they realize by themselves, they, they typed it wrong. So they can go back one more time, one more chance to retype it correctly. So we are OK to allow that. And then if you want penalty, we can add this. After the second attempt, they still got the problem wrong. Now the key hints will start popping up. Okay, here is a hint. Here is this. You want to use it. So once they make a mistake, the real answer will show up. The answer key button will show up. I think the hints will come before itself. So, and then during the assessment, show the score. Um, you can say on each question immediately. During the assessment, show answer. I would say never show the answer during the thing. And this stuff, you can you can just adjust it. Can students view the work on the gradebook? Maybe after the due date. So you can change these according to your uh, preference. Students can see the scores in the gradebook. I can say immediately they can see the scores and the correct answer after the due date, something like that. So we filled everything, so that's good. And then if you want, you can put the category here. I don't worry about it here. So here we go. Um, I don't touch this section, but here we go. You can make it hard to print. If you want, you can do all those stuff, but you should hard to print, especially for the homework. Here is, if it is a time, this is where I'm saying, can you allow the late pass? I can say unlimited here, and then the student will use 20 late passes on one thing. Sometimes I say, oh, they can only use two late passes per assignment. You can adjust it like that. If it is timed one, you can put, the time, whatever. Allow student to work past the time limit. I just give grace period five minutes without penalty. So these kind of stuff, we can adjust it here. And then um, here is one I want to show. Here, help and hints. Um, we, can, we can change the hints and so you can make it show hints when available show video buttons, show written example. And there is an option that's called message your instructor. It's totally up to you. So what this means is if a student gets stuck, they will message you. Oh, I got stuck in this problem. They don't need to type uh, the problem number or anything. That problem will be attached for you as a, a message there. So you can directly see it. So now what else we have? Grading feedback. Uh, do not change, but you can make it count in a grade book. Don't count in a grade book. Make it as an extra credit. You can do all those stuff. But do you want to give a penalty if they use a late pass? You can adjust it here. So these are the stuff that we have. Um, 
And then you can see right here, provide show work boxes. This, if you say yes, or I can say during or after the assessment, and then for each question, there is a box that will come show work. So that's totally up to you. But for now, I just make everything available and apply the changes so you can see how these stuff look. So I adjusted the thing. Now, if you go to the homework, teacher preview, and you could see each box has an add work. So when they click the add work, they can either type it, they can just upload it, they can share a link. Any way you want, they want, they can they can just uh, put it here or message the instructor. So if they click the message, the instructor, you can see the whole problem is copied here, and then they can say, "Oh, I didn't know how to do this," or "I got this. Can you help me fix it?" So they can do all those stuff to the instructor, and they can send a message. Okay. Now I did not choose any recipe and so it didn't work. So basically this is kind of stuff like your uh, regular homework management system. Yes, this can be connected to your Canvas. That's the next part I'm going to show. So I'm going to go to this course. So what do I need to do? I'm going to export this course from here and I'm going to put it in Canvas. So this automatically, the grades are automatically recorded. If a students do it second time, the grade will automatically update in Canvas, so we don't need to worry about it. And you can even see to the minute detail what time they logged in, uh, what time uh, they did the second attempt, did they use the late pass, uh, all those things you can see it clearly. All right. So now, um, what am I going to do? Take this my open math homework and put it inside the Canvas. That's what we are going to do. So here we go. And you can see copy from, let's say I have a course, but I have this one section I want to copy from another, another course, you can do it. Or you want, you can add and customize this however you want. Since it's all OE or textbook, you can use one chapter from this book, another chapter from another book, whatever you want that works for your class, you can mix and match, no problem. Um, here we go. I'm going to export this course. And this is a little important thing that we Include app con configuration does not, do not include if you have a statewide credential or if you can import. So what do I mean by second import? This is the first time I'm going to export this and put it in the canvas, all right? But remember I told you, if you forget to put in an assignment, you go to my open math and create a new assignment, that time that's going to be second uh, import. Right now, this is a first import. For the first import, you always include this button. Okay, and then um, I don't worry about nothing much here, but you can read through this. I'm just, uh, for the time sake, I'm just going a little faster, but please, please don't hesitate to ask me any questions if you have. So for the first one, I check this box and I say download export cartridge. Okay, so okay. it's going on and you can see my download screen right here, it says, IMSCC. This is the extension that we use for our Canvas course. So this is downloaded, I think. Do not open it because it will not open unless we put it in the Canvas. So second part of it is, um, of course, you do have this course setup instruction right here. It tells you how to do it, but I'm just going to walk you through uh, for now. All right. So I am going to go to a sandbox. That was my sandbox. Oh. Let's go to one of the sandbox here. Oh, here is one sandbox. There we go. Here is my sandbox. So now, what am I going to do? Import those stuff to here. So import from common. No, no. I'm not importing from common. Uh, import existing content. So I click this in my canvas. And then right now we have a canvas course export package. So I do that. Now choose file. There was my file. I think it was in download. Here is download. This is the one. Open. 
I want all content, but if you want only specific content, you can choose it. Uh, adjust date, I'm not really, really going to worry about it. So I have it, import. Okay, here is where I want to wait for a minute because based on the size of the course, it may take a few minutes, all right? So right now it looks like running really fast, so it will update. And then you will see there is an issue, all right? There is an issue. So let's see what is the issue and how we fix it. Right now, we are, we kind of downloaded it, but we kind of need to link it, all right? So um, let's do it. Meantime, while it does that, I am going to do this because I'm going to show you two scenarios. Uh, some colleges, some of your colleges have given you access to do the integration by yourself but some colleges don't give that access. For example, um, the one that I'm using is a Compton instance. For us to get the LTI integration, we need to get approval from our DE, which is Distance Education Committee. Um, so be, once you integrate it in that case, I need to let the DE coordinator know, hey, I'm using this MyOpenMath, which is already approved for us. All is just the first time. If you are doing the same course again, you don't need to do any of them. even faster. You don't need to do any of those. Just for the first time, we need to tell them, hey, I'm using my open map. This is my LTI key. This is the secret. Can you put it in for me? So I, I need to request it. So, but some co colleges, they don't need to request you. They will give you a, a complete access to put in the LTI by yourself. So I will give you two scenarios so that you can see how both different colleges work. So, well, this is taking a little bit longer. Um, it's almost there. So while it is there, let me put the same course in a different campus. Yes, yes, your local administrator, Canvas administrator will be able to help you. So this is good now. It says, uh, it says completed and it says one issue. So if you click that one issue, that says that the security parameter for external tool, my open math needs to be set in the course settings. So you need to do the real connection right now, right? So how do I do that is it has only one issue. This issue will be taken care. Everything will work fine. So how do I do that? Go to settings. Settings is right here in the canvas. You go to apps um, and then view app configuration right here. When you scroll down, here is my open math. It's already displaying for us because we input the course and the, the canvas recognized that it has my open map. So here, when I click here, It says the assignment and app placement, but it didn't give me an option to put in. So in our campus, for the first time, what I do is I need to send the key and the secret. Where is the key and secret? Remember, when we go to my open map, um, this is our class. And in the in instruction, you will see it. Or just let's go to the class. Here is the class. Core settings. And you can see those password, um, where did it go? Here, course level, show course level key and secret. So for the Canvas one, use the one that end with one, okay? To allow, to only allow access through Canvas. I always use the one and the first one ending with one because I don't want students to go to my open map directly. This is really important. Don't allow students to go to here because if they go to my open math the grades will not import it directly to the canvas because this is something separate we are not connecting then the grade the students will be seeing everything same but the only problem by choosing this is the grades will not integrate so this the first one is the one use we need to use so everything will come to canvas so the first option we use and this is the uh, secret so you need the first code here from your course and you need this secret. These are the two things you need. Go put it in the canvas, all right? 
So now you copy these two and you will be sending it to the administrator in case if you can put it in. So now let me go to a different, um, different um, uh, place or I can just show you how it works. Um, after you put in how it works, I will show you. So this is the sandbox that I was working on. Right now, you will see everything came in here. Let me show you where everything is. Uh, let's go to modules. This is the canvas course I put in. Okay, this says calc one. It says review of function. So let's go through one by one and see how my canvas course looks, okay? This is the stuff that I put in. It's not linked yet, but let's see what you can see. Here we go. Uh, let's click the first page, or first one, learning objectives for 1.1. So the learning objective got copied, and then the reading got copied. It's a direct link. The book will load up right here. If they can read it right here. They don't need to go anywhere. But they want it bigger. If we click this, it will open in a new tab, and they can read the corresponding section, they don't click pages, you put click, so it's corresponding section directly, take that to 1.1. All right, so again, sometimes if we give a chapter, I can just edit this link to a corresponding section, so we do it on our own, so, um, so it will take them to the book. So the next one is, um, let's see, what do we have? These are videos that created for the section. So all the videos populate and it plays nicely. They can play here or they can go there. And again, these videos are all captioned um, because I told you many, I, of course we have to check it, but almost 99% it's all captioned. This is all taken from Math is Power for You um, video set. They have for all the subjects, so all the math different uh, levels, so they have it there. So these are taken from there. So it will be caption, punctuation, etc. That will be more accessible. But double check, okay? Uh, most of them, it's ninety nine. And of course, you don't want this. You have your own video. It's super easy. Just edit it, edit this page right here, and put in your stuff. And you have your worksheet to go along with this. Just add the worksheet, whatever you have. You don't even need to worry about my open math. And once you do it, everything can be done in Canvas. So these stuff is all uh, standalone. Okay, there is no grades involved. But if you want your students to watch the video and get a grade for it, you can also do it in my open math. All right. So right now, the next thing that we have here is the homework. This is the part that my open math um uh, like need to be linked. I have not linked it yet, okay? Once you put the uh, secret and the key, um, you it will show you your open, my open math login page, and then you put your login only one time. The first time, everything will work fine. So the places where it says homework, that's the only thing that works from the my open math, and we need the connection. Since my college don't allow me the connection to put by myself, which I have already put for you guys and have it ready. So that's where I'm going. So this is my Calc 1 class um, that I'm currently teaching. So with that said, I want to go to make sure I don't show any student stuff because it's my live course. Um, so here I go to modules was a homework um, because for me, chapter one is a review. I did not give homework. Let's go to chapter two. Chapter two is going to be here. Exercise 2.1, chapter two. Here, some exercise, let's open it. So here we go. This is the example that I showed you. I copied that course. So here is the question. 
here the answer i am in a teacher view right now so i can see everything this is the answer button um you know so like that we have a different questions you have a video another video and um there is the, these tools allow a student to graph also so they can they can use the tools to graph so sometimes in online homework it's hard to graph but these tools some of the problems where the students need to graph they can graph so for example this is my homework that i am using in my class whatever we saw in my open math that just came up here so let me take you to the student view so you can see it um I'm in a student view right now. You can see, I'm not sure if it's big enough for all of you. So here it is. This is telling you, this, assess, this assessment was due on 2-25-2024. You have 20 late passes available. You can read him late pass, two late passes to open until Saturday. Why is it saying two late passes? Is because one of my late pass will allow them three days. So it's already past three days. So you have to use two late passes to open this assignment. But the students can decide whether worth spending that late pass on this homework assignment or not. Student has a choice. But it tells you, you can also open the assessment for ungraded practice. So if they click ungraded practice, they can still practice. Um, if you do so, you will not be able to use the late pass again. So sometimes students don't read it. I go over this in an orientation video, but they say, oh, I accidentally pressed practice, but I didn't see the grade. It's super easy. You can go back, oh, um, just, un uh, just uncheck the practice thing for that student account so they can go back. As, or if they send me a screenshot, even though it's a practice mode, I just give them the grade because you can go over, write the grade if they provide you the proof you can do that so that they don't need to use your late pass. It's just how flexible you are, how much time you want to go manage individual student, individual homework. It's totally your priority, but this software gives you total flexibility. Um, you can review your score assessment, blah, blah, blah. Um, so then you can just see that a uh, score assessment, whatever you want, you can do it. If I click practice, then I can't use the late pass, but if I click late pass, then, um, you know, I can use, um, I can do the problem and get the points that I want. So um, let's say that I say reading late pass, and then I'm going to resume. And you can see I started with the textbook and the videos here. When they click, it will go there. And then they can do, I put one question at a time. So they can go to the second question and they can try it. So you can just click whatever. Let's say I am a student right now. I am just submitting the question. It says, oh, you got partial correct. Three or some of them correct. You want to try again? Okay, I'll try again. So some of the I didn't read the question. I'm so sorry. I'm just showing you how it works. So right now the answers are being shown. You can see the answer key button popped up. I can see the answer and I can go click get a similar question. So now the question has changed a little bit and you can see it. So these are the questions the student can do. And then I want to show you an exam, how it looks. Um, I go to module. So the same exam, I make the students to submit the work. So let's go to the exam. Um, here is an exam. So let's go to the exam. And it says the instruction is that, dear students, this is a chapter two exam. This one, you can customize it. You can put whatever you want. Um, and just, I tell them, I'll give you 15 minutes to upload your work. So they need to submit and they have two attempts. The highest one will be scored because this one I need to manually go and score it because they are going to submit the work. They still see the grade based on right or wrong, but the partial credit this won't give. So I will look at their work and then go grade it and provide feedback for them. So let us start as a student so you can see how the questions look like. And since it is a timed, it's telling you, hey, once you click start, your timer will start. So here is the instruction, go to the first question. There is a question here, but each question they need to add a work. So here, add a work. So they can either upload or type whatever they want, they can do, and then go to the check answer. I didn't provide anything, but um, I can go to the next question. I don't know that question, so I'm going to the next question. Again, there is an add work. But since it is an exam, it's timed. 
So for each question, they will not get multiple attempts, but the whole exam, they can take it two times. So those kind of stuff, we cannot just, it's totally our, our choice. We cannot just however we want. So, um, so far, I, I, I know I have been talking a lot. Uh, let's stop here and ask if anybody has any questions. Anything else you want to see from here, I can, I can show it to you. Feel free to open your mic or type your question in chat. Yes, I know it's a lot of information. Um, so I, I had a question. I think if you wanted to um, bring in a new question, you know, is, is there like a library of questions and you could swap questions? That's awesome. So let's do that. Now I will just go to my, okay, leave as a student. I don't want as a student. I want to be as a teacher to show you that. Modules. Let's go to some random assignment and then we can change it. So, Um, I'm just going to go to some random assignment. Okay, here it is. Calculus of hyperbolic functions. I'm just randomly clicking one assignment so that I can play with it and, and show you. So I'm not in my open math now. I am in Canvas. So I click LTA Home. I click Questions. Questions. Come on, questions. Oh, here are the questions. All right. So now what I'm going to do is um, I don't, I, I can preview these questions. I can click this, uh, I can preview this and it has a help video. I'm good with it, but I want to add, if you want to remove it, super easy. You click this and remove it, it's gone. Um, but if you want to group it, let's for example, let's say this and this, I want to group. Let's say I'm just playing with it. I, these look like similar kind of questions, similar average time to a similar. So I'm just going to group it. So now I can tell the program uh, from this group, choose two question um, without replacement. No, I want with replacement. Every time they do it, they get a different one. So I can do these kind of grouping and I can create a pool for the computer to randomly generate the question. That's one part. Now, I'm not happy with this question. I'm looking for some kind of question that I want to add. So by right now, we are on the questions. I showed you how to group it. Um, now, all these questions I reviewed, I am not happy. I'm going to search for questions that are available. So I'm going to put in all libraries. I change it to all libraries. And I'm going to check derivative of uh, hyperbolic functions. All right, that's what I'm, I wanted, so I'm checking that. So this is derivative of inverse hyperbolic function, derivative of inverse hyperbolic function, and I want you guys to see this question in the bottom that has a video and that has a little solved problem, that's a hint available. When you see this, this problem doesn't have a random generator to it. If you see this, it's the same problem. It will not randomly generate different numbers for different students. So those are the little things that we need to remember. As you could see, it doesn't random generate. It's the same question. Even if you put new question, it looks the same. The random generator is not set up for this question. Okay, and you can see who is the author. So sometimes you see a question and you like it and there is no random. I just message the owner. Just make it randomized, please. I want to use it in my class. A lot of times they, they are okay with it. As when they see it, they are they are flexible, they will fix it for you. So, but can you create your own question like this? Yes, if you know the coding, yes, you can do it. The programming a little bit, you can you can do it. But for me, I'm still learning how to code a question and make it randomized. So I don't take a risk. Sometimes I copy a question and change it a little bit. Um, but I don't want to take a risk so, on creating a wrong question for my students. But absolutely, if you know coding, you can create. And we have a lot of functions, pre-made functions to call in to calculate stuff. So this is what I saw the questions right here and see if you want to add it um, so you can make a decision. So 
I mean, I think we have only three questions. I want to see more. Maybe the wording that I'm checking is not right. So let's just check only hyperbolic function and search it. Um, so now I see a lot of questions and you see the ones that are grayed out. That means you already use that question here. You have that question right here. It's used, already used. Now, oh, okay, I want to use this, this, this. I want to use all these stuff in my homework assignment. So you can just click and you can say add. In the add, you can just simply add or add as a group. Um, however you want, you can just add it. But right now, each problem right here, I set for 10 points. So if I add using default, all those questions will be added here. Did I click it? Yeah, it's added here. And the default points is 10. It's already added. And then you say done. OK, here is a small thing. Um, so for example, I kind of group something, let's ungroup it so that you can see what happens right now. Um, before it was out of some number of questions. Now I changed it to 200 points. Now I made it 20 questions. I say done, right? Now it came up with the whole My Open Math preview. You can see the My whole Open Math preview. So um, whatever, these are the dummy things that I added. I changed it to exam three review. Um, so I just added some extra copied assignments where I can go in and remove all the question and put a new questions. So now the reason I'm not done yet, I need to click edit here. And I want to see that before there was only 17 question and it was for 170 points. Now what I did was I added 20 question. Now the assignment became 200 points. So you can update it and you can choose a category. Oh, this is a homework category. And if you want, don't count this for my final grade. This is just a practice. You can do all kinds of stuff, like whatever you can do in the canvas. You can put a due date and you can save or you can save and publish. Since it's my live course, I'm not publishing it. I'm just saving it. So that's pretty much. Now you can see it's 200 points. And actually, this is not real, real assignment because we copied Calc 1 and Calc 2. This is just from Calc 2, but this is a Calc 1 class. So that, that, that's why you don't see any instructions, anything here. So you can see now I have 20, 20 questions. So what I'll do is uh, when I copy a template assignment, what I do, I just go here. I want to show this cool feature. So I'm here. I click all. And I'm going to remove all these questions. But I before that, I want to show you. If you want, you can add text boxes. You can add videos in between. So before jumping to that question, the student watch a video and then go there. So we can make it any kind of thing doable for our students. We can customize it however we want. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to delete everything. Let's pretend that this is my exam. So how will I do my exam? So I I I select all and I remove it. It says, are you sure you want to remove? Yes, I want to remove. All the questions are gone. But right now, I want to add questions from my homework. I know if I put that question on the exam, students already know how to do it. You don't need to worry about if they see the exact question. They may, but it's optimized. So let me show you. So instead of searching the question from libraries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my assessment. This is a final exam, okay? So I want to select the questions from exam one review, exam two, or exam three review, uh, whatever you want. You can choose an assignment or you can choose this homework assignment. Anything you want, just choose it. I want to only choose questions similar to those. So I chose that and then say, use these assessments. Okay, now all these assessments are showing here. Look, exam three review has this many problems. Exam two has this many. Exam three has this many. Exam one, blah, blah, blah. Now I can group these stuff. Okay, I can group based on the topic. So I'm, I'm just going to just show you some random stuff. So these are all saying evaluate. So I'm just quick few evaluate the limit. And then I go up there, add as a group. So that's my first question. So students will randomly get one question from this group. 
Uh, and again, if they try it again, it's without replacement, but if you want with replacement, you can put it there, no problem. So this way I exactly know what questions students are taking and I know that, oh, this is an exercise, this is a homework. They should have done it. So I know what they are um, they are getting in the exam. You can manage it in different ways. This is one of the way that we can we can do it. Or you can if you don't want your homework question, this is what I do. So now change it to all libraries. Um, let's go change it to all libraries. Uh, I just put find the derivative. That's it. I will see all kinds of derivative questions. You can see there's tons and tons of questions right here. That says the word, it says find derivative. That's all I put, find derivative. So these are the ones that has find the derivative in the um, topic. So you have the quotient rule. Okay, let's preview this. Um, okay, this is a nice question. I want to use it. Then I can put this and add. I want every single student to take this similar question, so don't even group it. Everybody will see the same exact question in the in the text, something like that. So um, you can totally, totally customize it whatever way you want to have your exam. Um, so students have a, a very good experience, and and usually, like sometimes the exam review, I put like. Uh, problems, a lot of problems, they practice everything. And then in the exam, I kind of group it, pull it. Um, so students know what they are getting, but if they really practice the exam review with all the questions, then they will be comfortable. They should be comfortable in doing the exam. So something like that. So just, they are not stressed of like what exactly it is. It, it, every time I change it. So sometimes I make the practice exam timed and then they have the same feeling of what they have to do before the exam. So it's totally, um, different. And also you can change the settings right here. So I have three questions right now, or let's make it five. So let's make it two here. Let's make it two here. So let's not follow from here. So two here. Um, so we have this, I have a total 50 points because I'm choosing here. So right. So let's say assessment um, settings. So you just go to assessment settings and you can change whatever you want. Hello students, you have 120 minutes for this. You can put anything on the introduction. And if you want the students not to see, you can hide it from them. And then when the time comes, you can show the date. Do all the stuff from here. Too. So let's say this is an exam. So I want this to be a quiz style. And um, the number of times they have taken, I'm just giving you two attempts. And you can change all those stuff right here. But this time, I'm only changing for one assignment right here. I'm not changing the mass change. This is just one assignment. And then I can tell them, make sure you show the work. So I'm going to say during or after the assessment. Um, usually, I like during because after the assi assessment is like after any time they can upload. But I put during, but in my instruction, I say that, look, the exam is only two hours, but I made the time as two and a half hours. So when the timer is running, the last half an hour is for you to take a picture and upload. Or like students, once they know it, they kind of know. That's why making the practice exam similar, they get the same experience of what they want. So, and then when we put after, that's kind of any time after, so I can't control when they upload it. So I just put during. So, and then I give that extra time and then I tell, especially in the grace period, I tell them, hey, you have like a time limit, 120 minutes, and then I allow students to pass work, pass work. I just put 30 minutes to upload your work. I just tell them. So the timer will tell. You have a grace period of 30 minutes, so then they can upload the work over there. So they can change whatever they want. And then don't forget to save changes. And of course you can, because this is an exam, I don't want all these hints available for them. They, I don't want them to watch those, so I can remove those um, and then I can save changes. So now it always goes back to the original. Now I need to make sure my assignment is changed. And you can see this assignment doesn't count towards the grade because that's how I marked it. And this is just going to be 50 points. This is going to be an uh, exam. Um, but again, this assignment doesn't count for the final grade, so it doesn't matter what category I put in, um, but the students get the same feel of 
uh, how they take the exam. How you can save it. Do they upload the work before submitting the exam? Oh, you can make that a choice. You can allow them after submitting, but there is a choice. Let me go back there. Um, LTA home settings. So you, this is the part, uh, provide show box during the assessment. Uh, that means the show box little button will be available only during the assessment. You can make it after the assessment. That means after the assessment is over, it will pop up and everybody will be bulk loading it. But I, I either I use during or I use during or after, but I tell the students, you have only 30 minutes deadline after the exam. Uh, if you don't upload within the 30 minutes, I will not consider because you can see when they upload and all those stuff. So, um, so um, I, I suggest like during or during or after. So right now I put during, right? So when I, when I put during, when they go to the assignment for each question, they will see the box right there. That's when if a student doesn't want to upload later, they want to type right away when they are solving the problem, they could. If you don't put during, then it won't show when they do the problem. And later on, it will show then if they want to do it as they do the problem, it will be like harder for the students. So make sure it is there during. And if you want, you can allow after also, during and after. That's like my preferred choices. But it's up to the students and the, especially up to the instructor on the structural exam. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Any other questions um, you have? So that way I can address it because the time really flies. I want to show it just keeps going. So whatever questions you have, I can address it based on that. So the goal is to make our class a ZTC section. By doing this, your class is absolutely free. Students don't need to buy the book. Students don't need to buy the homework code. Everything can be accessed at one place. So it's right here. So that's that's really cool. So and then you can put your course as a ZTC section. You can put that logo there. So it will be there. So I can show it to you. Uh, I can also add three that our CBC exchange has a CTC badge to help search students go right to those courses uh, if your college is enabled in the exchange. Yes, so that's a really cool feature and it, it helps students a lot. Like some textbooks are super expensive. You can see here, look for um, low cost or zero textbook. So that should be in your schedule. So if you go here, let's go to some class. It's spring 2024. So you can see the logo right there. So it works. So that's, that's how we have to do it. So I wonder why this doesn't show for this course. I need to take a look at it, but yeah. So it's very helpful for our students. So let me stop sharing here. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for attending this and let me know if you have any questions and uh, yep. And we have more workshops uh, coming on your way. Make sure you sign up. A lot of amazing workshops that help you with different ideas to implement in your classes. Yeah, thank you for that uh, pitch. Gayatri, thank you so much for just this action-packed hour and a half. A uh, really deep dive, looking under the hood in my open math. Really appreciate it. I've added some links to some other OER ZTC resources for you all. And as Gayatri said, uh, we've got other um, webinars coming up. Let me put a, a link in chat for those. little self-promotion there. We encourage you to, to register for any that apply to your areas. Also, uh, in general, I'd like to remind you all about the courses that At One offers, uh, online PD courses. There's a link to those there for California Community College educators. These are absolutely free. They are very popular, though, so make sure you register early. Um, 
And uh, I want to one last time pitch our uh, our survey because this uh, not only does it give us lots of great information, it is also your way to uh, document that you attended this webinar if you need that for your local professional development or flex advancement. Um, you just designate that you want your responses to come back to you, a copy of them, and you could share that with your PD committee or uh, faculty development committee. Uh, one last chance for any final questions, either pop open your mic or put in chat. Sorry, Link is not opening. Is the phone? Uh, what, e uh, what email will we use to uh, communicate with you? Uh, you? I recommend you use your college email address if you want um, that documentation to come back to you for professional development. So did someone yeah. say that link is not opening? How about that one? Working. Excellent. So yeah, yeah, please use your college email address when you fill out that form and designate getting data back to you. Uh, Would you guys be putting a recording of this video? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thanks for the reminder. So we are recording this. We're going to get it properly captioned and then share it probably on our at one website. Uh, the link of which I've offered. It, Vision Resource Center might have it. If, if if all else fails, we can get you a link. If I put in our, I checked for the previous um, uh, previous uh, workshop recordings, but it's showing only from the previous years, none from this year. So I don't know if they only have the old ones there. Uh, that's a good. Yeah, question. those those are still being captioned. They'll they'll come up shortly. Okay. Thank you, Valerie. This captioning does take time to do it properly. Okay. So Thank it you. would be patient. And and then Valerie to confirm the links then would appear on our at one website. I believe so. Um, and of course, if they have any additional questions, they can always email that support at cbc.edu to get an ETA on when they'll be done. They they should be done shortly. They they've gone in for I think um, processing. So, okay. Thank you. Quick. Thank you. Happy Friday to you all, and uh, now go forth and prosper in the in the OER world. We we hope you enjoyed this. And um, Gayathri, do you solicit uh, emails from friends and inquisitors about uh, how to do? Yeah. Sure. So there's so much more than this. This is just an intro. So I'm putting my email address. Let me see if I type it right. Uh, in the chat, feel free to email me. Whatever I know, I'll be happy to share. So I'll, I'll provide you somebody, some resource where you can get more. Because every year we get more and more OER stuff coming up. And um, I'm, I'm still learning about ADAPT because I was just doing uh, my open math. Now this ADAPT became free in California. So that's linked with the LibreText. LibreText is another big source of um, OER where you can customize the book. So you can take some from different books and you can put together as your own book for your own campus for the particular course. You can do this and ADAPT using the ADAPT. You can customize the homework and make the whole class a ZTC section. So, and again, there are a lot of grants available. Make sure to check out those. Every college has the OER grant money, so you can use it to create those courses for your campuses. And our statewide academic senate also has its OERI. I provided the link in chat and the LibreText link as well. So thank you again, three and Valerie. Uh, great, great presentation. And we can stop recording and say goodbye and happy Friday and happy weekend to you all. Yeah.